next day from the Redneck Garage. Well, it is a gorgeous day out here in Middle Tennessee. It's about 80 degrees, and I am just loving it. We are continuing on our engine build series for the 2.5, or the 4.0 is basically the same procedures, uh, just a little bit longer. And we're going to be putting in our camshaft, uh, lifters, timing chain components, all that kind of garbage on the bottom end so we can get our head on this thing. So let's just start working on that. Okay, if you look at your engine, this is basically where your camshaft goes, either the 4.0 or 2.5, it really doesn't matter, the, the 6 cylinder of course is going to be longer, but these are all new bearings and you can see going back, um, Mark put those in at the machine shop, there's a special tool you have to use to grab it from the inside and put it in, so your machine shop is usually going to be the ones that put new bearings in, and that's where we're going to be installing the new camshaft. Okay, here's our new camshaft, and looks it's really, really pretty. <laughs> here's where it rides on the bearings, and we're going to lube those up with lube before we put it in there, just to make sure that they are good and lubricated. So that's the first thing that you're going to do. Now, one of the things I also would say is that when we get the engine assembled, we will take a tool and hook it up to the oil pump and pre-oil everything. So this is really for the assembly portion of it, not as much the initial startup, uh, because it will be good and old if you pre-oil it. And we're going to be doing that. When you're putting this in, kind of be careful. You want to try to gently slide it through and not hit those bearings. So you got to do a little balancing act as you go through and try not to hit anything as it goes through the bearings itself. Just kind of gently work it on in there. And we got one more. And you can see that gear, that's what actually drives your distributor. All right. Then you can see as it rotates around, the cams are what actually push the lifters up and down and make the rock arms go up and down. So that's awesome. Okay, now that we got the camshaft in, the next thing that you need to install is the timing components, and we're going to take a look at that. This is the new timing chain set that came with our master kit from Engine Tech, and it comes with your bottom gear, your top gear, and your chain, and that's what we're going to be putting on. Super cool. Now what you're looking for on these timing components, right, is the dots to line it up. This is a dot here, you can kind of see it there, and then there's a dot right here on the end of that. So I've got it halfway set up from eyeballing it, and we're going to set this on and take a look. But there's only one way this will go on because of your key and your crank, right? So that's how that's going to go on. And then this pin goes into your camshaft. And I got my wrench in case I need to just rotate it around a little bit, right? So we're going to line up this dot with that dot, and you can see that pin. So you can just kind of get your outer one on, and kind of eyeball your pin. And you're looking for this dot to line up with that dot. And it's pretty interesting that, you know, when I first started doing these, I thought, well, I'm not sure if I'm one tooth off, but the, the distance difference between one gear to the next is pretty pronounced. So if I'm here, I know I'm way off. And if I go one more up, right, on the sprocket, it's pretty far off there too. So it's not that hard to get it lined up. Right there should be right. Let me get this on our pin and we'll take a look at it. Okay, and it's on the pin. And sometimes you have to rotate it around a little bit to see if you're close or not. Okay, so we've got it on there. hope that clears it up. I always wondered about that when I was first doing it. It's like, is it lined up or is it not? You know, it's pretty far off if that dot didn't lined up like there. So we're lined up on our uh, chain. and I'm going to tap the gear flush real quick. You want it to go up there flush. And that looks good. So one thing you don't want to forget as you're doing it is leave this bolt loose because that would be just like catastrophic. Uh, it's 80 foot-pounds, so I tighten that down to 80 foot-pounds and uh, we're good to go on that. Okay, so you do have a little bit of differences between the 2.5 and the 4.0 and this is one of those small little idiosyncrasies. That's a big word for, that's a difference. Uh, <laughs> on the 2.5 you actually have a chain tensioner and it fits down here 
and it's got little grooves on the back of it that allow this thing to just kind of have a little bit of tension and as the chain gets slack in it, it allows it to go down and it mounts right in here. Oops. And it mounts right in here. You can see that it won't go on because this you have to push this up. So on the 2.5 the chain tensioner goes right here. And it's got two Torx bolts that hold it on and you can see that it'll snap out. And it rides on the chain. Now, so we take a look at the old one, you can see the wear on the end of it, right here where the chain's just worn it down, and this thing either had a lot of wear or slack or something in it, and this is just completely worn out. I, my guess is that probably this Jeep never had the timing chain uh, changed in it, or they ran low oil, or they never changed oil, or something. That was definitely abuse, or just extreme wear. So we're waiting on that to come in. Um, as soon as that gets in, we can throw it on there. But we're basically ready to put our lifters in. So here's our lifters, and they're sitting in oil, and there's all kinds of different theories on what to do with these. You can set them in oil and then try to press down the hydraulics with a, you know, an old push rod or something. But we're going to be pre-oiling the engine, so it really doesn't make that much difference, to tell you the truth, as long as you pre-oil it. And we'll be, that'll be in a later video. You should be just fine. So I'm going to take my um, needle nose and drop them down in the holes. And actually, you can see the cam lobes down in there if you look close enough. But there's a tool made for this that I don't use. I don't have. I'm just going to use my little needle nose to kind of get them started in the hole. And then kind of wiggle them around, and they should go on down in there like that. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and put all my uh, lifters in the holes in the top. Alright, so there's all our lifters installed, and a couple of them were just a little bit tight right there at the end, so I tapped on it with the old push rod, and they just dropped right in where they're supposed to be. So those look great. They're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that's a good stopping point for today on our rebuild of the 2.5 or the 4.0. Um, the biggest difference that we saw is that this has a timing chain tensioner, and the 4.0 does not. I'm not really sure why AMC did that engineering, but uh, that's the way it is. Nobody in Nashville has one. Uh, O'Reilly's could have one by 5, but Amazon's going to drop one off by tomorrow morning, so I'm just going to wait for that. There's no sense in me ordering one and having to run down there and all that garbage when it's going to be delivered at my door from Amazon. Where we're at on the rebuild would be considered what's called a short block. On the 2.5, I've done some pricing on them, and uh, around $1,000 is what I've seen. Pretty much typical as far as the cost of a rebuilt short block. Uh, if you were to take out the lifters, it doesn't come with lifters. Uh, in this motor right now, I probably got on a short on the short block side. I probably got about uh, I'd say three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars, four hundred dollars with the machine work and uh, the uh, rebuild kit. So it is cheaper to do it yourself. One reason why I like doing it myself is because I know what I've got, and I probably take a little bit more time making sure things are right than say a machine shop that throws them together and puts them up on eBay. I don't know. I'm sure there's some good ones on there. But anyway, I'm super happy with our progress. We'll get the tensioner in, get our time cover on, and then we'll start rebuilding the top end, and the motor will be ready to drop into our frame. And that's really super exciting, huh? <laughs> I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Keep turning wrenches.